I'm Melanie Korn. I'm the provost at California College of the Arts in Oakland and San Francisco. Um, and I wanted to um, talk today a little bit about how the institution, the colleges, can support community partnered project based teaching and learning. I realize that is a very clunky way of saying it, um, community partnered project based teaching and learning. And the reason I have chosen that is because um, I, we don't have a great uh, word or words, and so this is kind of a catch all. Um, admittedly clunky, clunky for me. But what's important about it for me is that I'm talking about um, courses that are partnering with a community, not just serving a community, um, that they are working on uh, some uh, project together that is addressing some social need. So what is CP teaching and learning for short? Um, again, uh, this can happen in a curricular sense. So in this, in one case, CP courses um, are classes in which a faculty member facilitates the development of, um, of often interdisciplinary and collaborative student-led projects in which the students work together with a community partner to address a social need or issue. Um, the image here is uh, from one of CCA's classes, one of our uh, very first engaged courses, where a group of interdisciplinary students were working with Oikonos Wildlife Restoration and Rebar Art Design and Activism Studio Group um, to design, build, and install ceramic nesting modules on the northern, uh, northern California island of Año Nuevo um, to protect the eggs of the threatened rhinoceros auklet, um, the small bird who laid its eggs in the sand um, on the same beach where the giant elephant seals would come to breed. Um, so all of their eggs were getting crushed, which is why they were threatened. Um, so they ended up building a number of these, uh, and they're still there today, um, working really well. The birds love them. Um, but it might also be a co-curricular model where um, the uh, where the students are doing something outside of a course. Um, we have something at CCA called the Impact Social Entrepreneurship Awards. Um, this was one of the winning teams from summer 2013. Um, Juabar um, is a solar-powered community power hub um, that was uh, in East Africa and Tanzania. Um, the students worked with, again, a community partner organization in Tanzania um, to bring solar-powered cell phone charging station out into the communities. And this, comp this, uh, this student group actually is now a company. Um, they are a small company um, where uh, people, uh, individuals can essentially sort of um, lease to own um, these solar power stations and therefore become small business entrepreneurs themselves. So why does this all matter? Um, I think, you know, we, I, I won't spend too much time on this because I think we all uh, kind of come to some shared understanding that it does matter. But I think um, this work, community partnered project based work, um, can be important for the institution. It can help um, our institutions fulfill our missions of doing public good, uh, to do work that is being a good neighbor. Um, and it also creates excellent fundraising opportunities um, to sort of meet uh, different uh, individual donors and foundations. Um, it is also doing good for the community, um, giving the community often some real tangible thing that they need, giving them access to young, uh, great uh, creative minds. But I would also argue that this work um, does uh, matter for our students. And um, one of the ways is that I think we um, need to be demanding uh, civic education and higher education um, because it is vital to our democracy. I would also argue that visual arts and design practices play a central role in solving the world's wicked problems and that these courses can help um, students realize that. And finally, the skills acquired within these courses, creative problem solving, critical thinking, communi communication, collaboration, are key to success in the creative economy. Whether or not the student is interested in pursuing this type of work long term, um, the skills they learn will be great for them. Um, one of the things that I um, have been trying to focus on lately is the idea that the value of, of uh, creative practice, our creative economy, um, is not uh, in an antagonistic relationship with our values, um, and it doesn't have to be. Um, and in fact, this space in between is an important place where I think CCA um, plays a big role, as many of our peer institutions, and this is precisely the place where uh, community-partnered project-based teaching and learning sits. So um, CP models at CCA um, run the gamut. Uh, you know, we have a BFA in community arts. We have an MFA in fine arts, uh, in social practice. 
We have um, a suite of design biz, uh, MBA programs, the newest of which is an MBA in civic engagement. We have a new um, MDES uh, in interaction design starting in the fall that has a focus on social impact. Um, we've also been partnering with John Bielenberg, a designer who is bringing Project M to CCA um, and has been doing a series of rapid ingenuity blitzes uh, with, for us and with our students. Um, and then we also have many other kind of one-off CP curricular and co-curricular projects, events, sprints, happenings. Um, and finally, we have the Center for Art and Public Life. CCA Center for Art and Public Life, um, center.cca.edu. You should uh, definitely go there and check it out. It was established in 2000. Um, it currently, um, it's gone through a number of, um, of changes over the years, but it currently has three main programs that are its sort of core programs. The first is Engage at CCA. Um, as I mentioned, um, this is the curricular model where students, um, again, work in classes that are project-based, uh, partnering with a community organization. These classes happen throughout the curriculum. They're spread and sort of overlaid across our uh, departments. We run about 20 of those classes per year. The second is the Impact Social Entrepreneurship Awards. Uh, this is uh, a series of three awards that we grant to student teams each summer. These awards, well, they're granted in the spring, but so they do the work in summer. Um, these awards are $10,000 a piece. And um, these interdisciplinary groups of students come together. They present their own idea of what they might want to do out in the community um, and go through a you know, sort of shark tank kind of like process. Um, and then CCA Connects. Um, CCA Connects is our externship program where we use um, CCA operating dollars as well as federal work study money to pay um, students work study wages to actually do their work, not on campus, but within community partners. So um, nonprofit organizations, community organizations who uh, do not have money themselves to pay interns um, can apply to get a CCA Connect student uh, working with them. Center for Armed Public Life currently has five full-time staff, a director, uh, three program managers, and one operations office manager, and an annual budget of about $525,000. Um, I'm giving you the details here because I think this is important to understand sort of how we actually do this work. And I know I'm going quickly and I'm happy to share this PowerPoint with um, any of you. So you can just ask for it. Um, th that budget is supported through an endowment. When the um, center was founded, um, we got a $5 million gift from one of our board members. And so we pull off of that endowment anywhere from two hundred dollars to $225,000 a year. We also spend about $175 of our own um, operating dollars every year on it. Um, in addition to another $25,000 at CCA money, that's kind of the sort of um, uh, work study money. And then another 75 that comes through kind of various individual contributions, a few small um, foundation gifts, et cetera. This money gets spent out in the following ways. The biggest bulk of it goes to staff. And I know that some of you might think like, oh, why are you spending all that money on just paying staff people instead of supporting the work? But my contention is that actually having those staff is so essential to supporting this work. Um, we also spend then about 80,000 paying the students for connects, um, about 45,000 for those three $10,000 grants and other programming with impact. Um, we only spend about $10,000 on actual sort of engage, uh, you know, sort of get-togethers, other functions, et cetera, and then about 15000 on just kind of general office operating stuff. So how can institutions beyond CCA um, support uh, CP models? Um, I would say, again, that you need to have the administrative structures and personnel to help manage relationships and logistics. <clears throat> You need to have money for project fulfillment. That's something that we need to do better at CCA uh, with. You need to have a stronger emphasis on integration into the core of the institution. So this shouldn't just be this add-on thing that happens over there. This needs to be really central to the institution and therefore needs buy-in from the top. And broadly, not just from the top, right? I mean, that's the other problem that happens sometimes is you only have this kind of presidential mandate, but you know the faculty and students don't care about it. So you've got to have both. Um, you need to have uh, training on research skills as well as cultural competency for students and faculty. And finally, greater support for faculty in general. Um, faculty need monetary rec recognition that these courses take significantly more time. 
further research into how this work can better be accounted for in promotion and tenure processes, and pedagogy training and development, broadly speaking and directly within a CP framework. What, can, what ACAD can do across the sector, we can collaborate on specific projects with our local peers and sometimes um, non-local peers in doing international study abroad kind of CP courses, et cetera. We can share IRB and IP processes, uh, potentially. Um, we can also just share best practices and toolkits amongst our institutions. So, for example, we've started um, creating you know, resources to help our own faculty, but they're up on our public website, and anyone can access them and sort of you know, model after them. We can also develop a dictionary for a shared understanding. There are so many words that we use right now. Community arts, public arts, social practice, social entrepreneurship, social innovation, community engagement, public interest design, and the list goes on. And they all have different meanings. I'm not arguing for one word, but I would say that we need to maybe find three or four words that we can kind of all agree on you know, what they mean. Um, we can launch a social innovation network. We're working on that right now, and um, the first thing will be sort of reaching out to all of you to do an inventory of, of this work that is happening on your campuses, and then go for, from there to on sort of a PALS-like model. And then finally, um, we can encourage member institutions to join national networks. Um, right now, I would say the ACAD schools are underrepresented in most of the networks for colleges and universities that are focused on community or civic engagement and service learning. Um, last I looked, and it was about a year ago, so this might have changed, um, there were six ACAD schools in Campus, campus Compact, only five in Imagining America, and only two in the Carnegie classification for community engagement. Um, so this is sort of my argument for how ACAD can help us all move this forward. And finally, on a totally different note, save the date for next year. Um, the ACAD conference um, is moving from CCAD to CCA um, across over on the West Coast, and we'll be focusing um, with the assistance of an NSF grant on um, uh, exploring science in the art and design studio. Thank you very much.